When you first dive into the field of interpretable machine learning, you'll notice some very similar terms flying around. We're going to discuss one definition and hopefully clarify some things. That is the difference between an interpretable model and an explainable model. Although I should warn you, there is no consensus. Part of the problem is that IML is a new field. Definitions are still being proposed and debated. We can't even seem to decide on the name for the field. Is it interpretable machine learning, IML, or explainable AI, XAI. So we'll focus on one potential definition. We will learn how to classify a model as either interpretable or explainable using this definition. We'll also discuss the related concept of interpretability. To end, we'll discuss the problems with this definition and why it's actually probably not necessary to classify models using it. If you missed some details or want the references for the information in this video, make sure to check out the article linked in the description. Also, if you're interested in IML, make sure to wait till the end of the video, where I explain how you can get access to a Python SHAP course. So we say something is interpretable if it is capable of being understood. With that in mind, we say a model is interpretable if it is capable of being understood by humans on its own. We can look at the model parameters or a model summary and understand exactly how a prediction was made. Another term you may have seen for these types of models is an intrinsically or an inherently interpretable model. A decision tree is a good example. To understand how a prediction was made, we simply have to transverse down the nodes of the tree. Another example is linear regression. The model you see here gives the predicted loan size for a customer based on their age and income. We can immediately see why someone aged 29 with $3,000 monthly income is predicted to have a maximum loan of $33,100. It is also easy to see the general trends captured by the model. That is, the loan size will increase by $100 for every year a person ages and $10 for every additional dollar of income. So we can look directly at these models to understand how they make predictions. This is because they are simple. The decision tree only has a few nodes and the regression only has three parameters. As our models get more complicated, we can no longer understand them in this way. A model is a function. The model features are the inputs and the predictions are the output. An explainable model is a function that is too complicated for a human to understand. Another name for this is a black box model. We need an additional method or technique to be able to peer into the black box and understand how it works. An example is a random forest, which is made of many decision trees. To understand how the random forest works, we need to simultaneously understand each of the individual decision trees. Even with a small number of trees, this is not possible for a human. Things get even more complicated when we start to look at algorithms like neural networks. To put it in perspective, AlexNet, a convolutional neural network used for image recognition, has over 62 million parameters. In comparison, our regression had three parameters. It's simply not possible to understand how a model like AlexNet works by looking at the parameter weights alone. So we need some additional techniques to understand how these models work. This includes methods created for specific types of models, such as DeepLift, which was created to explain neural networks. They also include model agnostic approaches, which can be used to explain any model. These include methods like Lime, SHAP, PDPs, and ice plots. We should always use these methods with a level of caution. They all come with their own assumptions and limitations. And really, they only provide approximations for how the model makes predictions. Up to this point, we have discussed models as either being interpretable or explainable. Yet, it may not always make sense to apply this binary flag. This is because interpretability is on a spectrum. Or, in other words, interpretability is the degree to which a model can be understood. A convolutional neural network is less interpretable than a random forest, which is less interpretable than 
a decision tree. Most models can generally be classified as either interpretable or explainable. However, there is a gray area where people would disagree on the classification. This gray area is where we find our first issue with the definition. We may agree that a random forest with two trees is interpretable, but a random forest with a hundred trees is not. At what point does the model go from being interpretable to explainable? Even a decision tree with many nodes or a regression with many parameters can become too complicated for a human to understand without additional techniques. The issue is that we are trying to classify a model based on human comprehension. And there's no formal way to measure this. Your ability to understand a model will depend on your technical skills and professional experience. Even amongst professionals, there will be disagreement. Another issue is what we define as additional techniques. Even with the simplest models, we often seek help from additional methods. It is common to use a correlation matrix when explaining the weights of linear regression. Does this mean regression is now an explainable model? This leads to the question, do we even need this definition? The goal of IML is to understand and explain our models. We do not need to classify them as interpretable or explainable to do this. The methods we choose will ultimately depend on the type of model and the specific questions we seek to answer. But like I said in the beginning, there is no consensus. So what do you think? Do you agree with this definition? Or do you think there's a better way to classify our models? If you're interested in IML and want to get started, then check out my course on SHAP. It's the most powerful Python package for understanding and debugging our models. And from the theory to application, my course will teach you everything you need to get started. And also, for a limited time, if you sign up to the newsletter in the description, you will get free access.